This is RIP G Cam. I was about to go to sleep. The MKBHD video about the new Google 6 popped up. I watched it, I read an article about it, and now I'm here. And I'm reacting to it because I thought you guys would all be reacting to it and I wanted to talk about it in the comments. The name of the new chip for the Google Pixel 6 is going to be Tensor. Previously, the rumored name for it was Whitechapel. It's a collaboration between Samsung and Google. And for those maybe less tech savvy, basically the processor inside of the phone is now going to be made by Google in collaboration with Samsung. And this means that Google is gonna be able to design a chip specifically for the wants and needs of a device. In the past, Google would take a chip made by a separate manufacturer and then adapt it to their needs with some custom tweaks here and there, but now they are going to go fully vertically integrated or mostly vertically integrated and have a chip designed for what they want. And this means some really good things it also means some really bad things. First up, the really, really good aspects of this are that for imaging, Google is going to be able to engineer the, their own way of handling the data that comes off of the sensor of the phone. And this means that they're gonna be able to use all of their software to make the images better, but not just images, also video. This also means because Google makes the operating system and Google makes the hardware and Google makes the SOC that we might see integration in applications at the same level that we have from Apple. The reason why all of your favorite TikTokers, influencers, and et cetera use iPhones is because there's essentially a small variety of Apple hardware. All of the apps work like natively with the camera app so that your Snapchat picture on an iPhone is going to look incredible. Whereas on a Xiaomi device or a Redmi device or a Realme device, it looks like a potato. We might see that all change now, but only with the Google Pixel. This doesn't just apply to photo. We could be seeing this with video as well. And we also could be seeing the same level of manipulation through software that Google is able to do in photos implemented in real time for video meaning your phone would recognize if you're taking a video of a starry night sky and have a slower shutter speed, or if you're doing fast motion, like realize that you're doing fast motion and shoot at a higher frame rate to give you better image quality and better video quality without you having to change a thing. And that level of computational help, that level of machine learning help for users simply means that everyone is going to have a phone that is smarter and thus takes better images and better video with less user input. The next area that we could see a huge increase is in application performance along with application battery life. Now, let me explain. A couple weeks ago, OnePlus was in the news for throttling a bunch of their apps and giving their apps worse performance for battery life and for thermals. What we could see though from Google is all of the first party Google apps being made to run on specific parts of the chip and thus run better and more efficiently. So things like uh, voice to text or real-time speech recognition in Assistant being better, but also using less battery. Now, we saw something kind of like this when all of the Adobe applications for the Apple M1 chip, like, complied with the Apple One chip, and recently the Adobe suite on my Mac Mini M1 has been optimized for it, and the increase in performance for my computer firsthand has been like 25 to 35 percent 
with software alone. And in the beta version, which I still use every day, and if I should do a video about Adobe Premiere Pro beta on the Apple M1, the performance of that is even better. And that's just a hint of what we can see in regards to making hardware and then having software designed specifically for that. And the marriage of those two things is absolutely fantastic. Now, we also have to talk about the bad because this means some really, really bad things for kind of everyone else. Basically, Google making their own SOCs, this is the death of stock Android, because the version of Android that Google is now gonna be putting on their Pixel devices is going to be a version of Android that really cannot be replicated, cannot be emulated on hardware that is not from Google, because the level of performance and the level of optimization that we are going to have on the version of Android that Google gives us is going to be completely different than the stock version of Android that Google releases at like the kernel open source level. And this means that people that want the stock or pixel experience are going to need to buy pixels. Sure, in appearance, we might be able to have something like a pixel experience ROM on a device, but the experience that we are going to be getting is going to be so far removed in regards to performance, battery life, optimization, features from the Google Pixel that it's kind of not going to be comparable. And so because of that, in many ways, Google making their own silicone is kind of the death of stock Android. The other downside of this is the death of Gcam. And this is something that we've been talking about a lot, but the things that we are going to be seeing in the Google camera and the Google camera app and the Google camera APK are more likely than not going to be things that we can't actually get on non Pixel devices. And this has actually been something that I have been talking about in the Gcam development closed community on Telegram now for a year. Basically, since Google has been hinting on doing their own hardware, all of the developers and all of us have been talking about pretty soon, we are going to get to the point that the Google Camera APK is going to be something that can't be ported. And as much as we want to see some of these custom uh, Gcam ports, they're not going to work, especially because the SOC or the chip that the Pixel will have is not going to be a Snapdragon based chip. So for a lot of us, this is RIP Gcam, or at least RIP for a newer version of Gcam. In my opinion, I think that this is a really exciting chapter in the world of Android. At the same time, I think this is a sad evolution of Android because it's not going to be the same. And Android in the future is going to rely more heavily on OEM manufacturer skins to give users not only better optimization, but better features because Google is going to be wanting to sell their own devices. So six years from now, will there still be a stock version of Android? I don't know. I think that probably not. And I think that more and more manufacturers are gonna be pushing their own first party apps because they're going to be optimized and actually using stock Android is going to be a decrease in performance, stability, and battery life. But what do you think?